art plays a very important role in our lives, from that shirt you're wearing to the painting on your wall. Over the years, art has been downplayed and viewed as unimportant until recently. On today's episode of Creative Lounge, we will be looking at um, creative economy and how it plays um, its role in our everyday lives. My name is Ahmed Mohamed Bello, and with me is Dr. Jenna. She's um, a creative entrepreneur and um, a partner of Sync Up Gallery. You're welcome to Creative Lounge. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed, for having me here. You're welcome. How has the day been so far? I mean, today has been all right. You know, the life of an entrepreneur, from the first client to the next client, it's not really a nine to five. And how do you, you know, juxtapose your career as a doctor and also as a creative? So honestly, I would say it's about creative systems, you okay. know, because it's not always easy trying to find the balance between the two. But I would say just trying to create systems that work in like your day to day lives. Like for me, I have a very solid morning and evening routine. Mm. And I think this just sets the tone for like my entire week. Okay. You know, so just creating a system that works, I would say, helps so to balance the two. Your being a doctor does not affect you being a creative. Actually, I would say sometimes they overlap. Just just to clarify, I'm not a medical doctor. I do okay. have a doctorate. Okay. So I would say that these things do overlap from time to time because, yeah, sometimes someone needs a health solution or they need someone that has an idea of health but would like someone to solve it in a creative way or okay. solve the problem in a creative way, if that makes sense. So, yeah. <laughs> now that's clear. You have a doctorate. Yes. <laughs> I was mistaken. Um, Sync of Gallery. I remember... This is where I had my first exhibition yes. some years ago. Yes, it was. You know, <laughs> my humble beginnings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Being a partner of you know this um, creative space, how did you come about the idea of creating a space like this? Because I believe it has helped a lot of people, especially someone like me. You know. Yeah. How did you come about the idea of creating this space? So. First, I cannot fully take credit for the idea because okay. I feel like it was a collective effort, you know. So there are four partners here at the Sync Hub, mm. and I feel like at the same time, we we're all in that space where we needed some, the community, the creative community here was lacking a space where they could just okay. come, create, and all of that. Yeah, there are a lot of creative hubs, you know. No, you know, shade to all the other creative hubs out yeah. there. but. We wanted something more fun, more flexible, a place that we could do events, but also we could get serious. And a place that it didn't, you didn't need to do too much. Like you, do, you could just come here, pick up the canvas, or come here, start recording like music, something, something. Because our space isn't just an art space. Like, yes, there's a lot of artworks and yeah. all, but we wanted a space where all aspects of creativity come to life. People could come, rub, rub minds, you know, bring ideas to life. Like you said, it was the first place you came to for your exhibition. And I'm sure that a lot of things have happened after that, yeah. you know. You met a lot of people here that day and, you know, people got to see you. So for us, it was really about creating that community, that network, you know, a place where creatives could really synergize. And that's really where the name Sync Hub came to be, you know, because we really wanted a place where ideas could really be synchronized, you know, mm. to add to the collective, to the creative collective, in okay. a sense. Yeah. So, um, being an entrepreneur that you are, how do you think, what do you think is that line between being a creative and being an entrepreneur? Hmm. Like, do you mean what connects these two? Yeah, what connects the two? So that was also part of the vision for Sync Hub. So I'll just mm. use that to describe it. So we wanted a place where we could kind of help people turn their talents into profits, you know, because there are a lot of creatives that, yeah, the talent is there. It's, mm. it's really not hard to find talent in Nigeria. Well, maybe I don't know about other African countries, but I'm speaking for Nigeria. Yeah. It's really not hard to find talent. But then a lot of people were finding it difficult to monetize that talent. And that's why we started some kind of incubation program. We haven't 
finished all the details, like fine tuned all the details and all. Yeah. But the idea is you bring your craft and we can help you actually put like a price on it and mm. all the structure, like your business models. Yeah. So we bring like the professional side to creativity as well. So it's not just about like raw talent. We're able to bring like talent and take it from that to profit. So yeah, I think that's where we came. We really come in. Um, so just build, bridging that gap between creativity, talent, and profit. I think that's where we can come in. in that so talking about profit and you know monetizing talent, mm -hmm. how would you define creative economy? So I would say there are lots of different definitions for this. Even mm -hmm. even if you check like Wikipedia or Google now, yeah. um, the definition is still changing. Just as 2022, the definition changed again. But first, I'll start with what I think most people think creativity is all about. Uh, sorry, creative economy is all about. Because when people think creative economy, they think theater, art, dance, film, which are all aspects, yes, of creative yeah. economy. but. I would say it's really like narrowing it down to what creative economy could really be about. So to me, there are several aspects. Now I'm, I've kind of coined it to like five key aspects of what creative co economy can entail in today's world, okay. which is like in the agro sector, the tech sector, spirituality and culture, as well as just branding consumer and design. And the last one I would say is lifestyle. <laughs> yes. So these are like the five aspects and lifestyle. So these are the five aspects I would say that are creative economy. So these different, because right now, creativity can be in literally every framework of our society if we want it to be, you know. For example, take, um, take signs on the road. You know, we could just put, oh, do not litter. But we could create it in a very, we could do something more artistic, something that actually captivates and captures our attention, you know. I feel like something I'm privileged is that I'm very well traveled, so I've seen a lot of different cultures and how they okay. infuse art into like their day to day society, you know. So, just as simple as turning graffiti into something so intentional can make such a difference. So, to me, I think creative economy is embedded in every aspect of society, it's for us to just find how we can, well, I say synchronize the whole system so okay. yeah so how would you say um sync hub has contributed to nigeria's creative economy so well to start i would say the space itself just having a space where people can come create a safe space to add where people can come create commune talk rob mind share ideas i think that on its own is already a big part of like what we do here the second thing is filling the gap because yeah. what we do is we try to find we find we have a lot of people clients that are interested in like creative they want someone that is creative right okay. or so people that have creative way of thinking to solving problems and i think that's where we come in you know for example the other day someone came to meet me and they were like oh they need a um, a landscaper you know and then i brought someone that was into like garden type designs and they were really surprised because it's like i need a landscaper and i was like trust me you're going to need him too <laughs> if you want what mm. you want to really like be different from every what everyone else is doing and i think that's where we come in we just try to bridge that gap you know between those in the corporate like very white collar corporate world yeah. and those in like the creative creative community. yeah We'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. You are welcome back. And if you're just joining us, this is Creative Lounge. And um, here in the house is Dr. Jenna. And we're talking about creative economy. Before we went on break, you were telling us about um, Syncop's engagement in Nigeria's creative economy. How do you think an individual or creative can also engage you know, 
in the creative economy. economy. Yeah. Right. So I have, well, I say two suggestions okay. I could make, but let me start with the first, which is to join a good creative community. Like my advice to any creative out there, they shouldn't be lone wolves. You can't do it alone, right? There's a reason it's an economy. It's going to take more than one person, you know? Mm. So I feel like creatives need to put themselves out there more, you okay. know, find good communities that they can be a part of, okay. you know? Because, for example, take an event we had the other day. There was a tech, someone that works in tech, and he met someone that knows how to illustrate. And now today, together, they're planning how to build an e-platform for mm -hmm. illustrators and graphic designers and, okay. like, um, 3D animators and all of that. And you see That's that... Cool. I know, right? And they've actually met, met in this in this, in this space. in this space, you know. And I hear a lot of those, like, stories, how it's like, I met someone here and I decided to do this. I met a DJ and we decided to, I don't know, start doing... There's um, a sound engineer that met a DJ and they're doing something great now. All so, in this space. All in this space. And, you know, mm. sometimes it's not even when we just have events. It's just, like, in the day-to-day. -day. Like, just today, I've had a few people walk in and walk out yeah. and it's like, okay, I have this idea. I need this person. How can I make this happen? But then... If you're not in the if you're not in those spaces, people wouldn't even know you exist. People wouldn't even know what you have to offer. So I think a big one big thing I would say is just be a part of a creative community. You don't have to be a social butterfly. You could be a little wallflower, but be there. You know, I feel you'd be surprised all the magic that could happen. You know, which leads me to my next point. Um, is do some market research. I know it's like when people hear all these market research terms, a lot of creatives start to freak out because it's like very business type lingo but what i'm just trying to say is try to find things that you can actually do for society what am i saying there's there's definitely something everyone can bring to the table you can yeah. be an artist a fine artist but then you could also be someone that develops signs i keep bringing up signs because it's something that i'm really like think, passionate about yeah i feel like we could do more with the signage in nigeria you know on the roads like take better care of your environment. There's just a, a lot of things that we can do, especially right now when like, when I say pollution is on the rise, there's so much we can do, you know, yeah. treat people better, spread love, not hate, you know, seeing these signs, you'd be surprised, but it actually has like nervous, it stimulates something in our brains, you know, and just helps us to be calmer, better individ individuals. Positive thinking. Yes. You know, so I feel like doing your market research, finding out like where you can actually provide value, you know, because I feel something a lot of artists struggle with is trying to separate the passion from the business, mm. you know, because so there's a passion aspect of it. And it's good to have that because that's what's fueling everything you're doing. Right. But then you have to have the things that you're creating that are adding value and bringing profit. Again, I've come back to profit because, you know. It's very important. Yes, that's, it's very important. So yeah. that's the thing. So I think that's another thing people have to figure out on their own. Like, what is something I can do that can add value? But like, at the same time, it's not what you're, it's not what you're, it's not like you're not passionate about it, but it's something you're doing for the collective. Yeah, just like you said, um, it's one thing to be talented. It's another thing to know the business of of you know being a creative i just wish there were more spaces that enlighten creatives on how to do business yeah because a lot don't know how to do mm -hmm. they don't know how to do business they're talented they're passionate about their craft but they don't know how to do business yeah. it's just it's just my opinion mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know I think, yes there's definitely there's definitely will i say a bridge that needs to be made there yeah. you know like more of those i think Something that could really help is maybe workshops. If people have that skill, because it's not only us that are doing this, there are other people out there. So if mm. pe more people have the skill to be able to help people turn their craft into, I don't know, money or whatever. I think they should definitely be, there should, more people pushing this out there. Basically. Because I'm sure there are a lot, I know a lot of artists that need this. I know a lot of, not even just artists, creative entrepreneurs generally, you know. So we have people that, you know, maybe they have a skill for, like I said, gardening designs. That that was surprising to me. I didn't know there was much you could do with plants. But then there's the way she just makes it all so beautiful, you yeah. know. And there's someone, there are people that need her, mm -hmm. you know. And 
I think in other in other other crafts and other types of skills, there's a lot of that. There's that bridge that just needs to be closed. There are so many talents, you know, I come across every day and I feel their works are too good to just remain in Nigeria. They need to be international, but a lot of them don't know how to even reach their target market. You know, the people who need to see their works, they don't know how to reach these people. Yeah. What ways do you think they can do that? So, like I said, I think there has to be more done. And it's not just in the society, I think on the government level as well, there should be more, will I say, um, attention that should be paid into this, this community, like this creative community, and how can we infuse these things into different aspects of our like economics. I mean, Nigeria has a lot of potential for tourism, so, so much potential. I go to places like Joss, and I'm just like, wow, there's so much space here, there's so much beauty, you know, but then... A lot of the time, I actually even tried, we tried one time to try and have a whole conversation on how we could create like a park. Okay. Uh, it's a dream I have, but maybe we'll discuss it later. <laughs> but create like, kind of like an eco-friendly art park, you know? Yeah. And we went as far as did the designs. We wrote, um, what's it called? Went there to write all these 20 documents. Mm. We wrote like a plan, like a business, how we want to execute it, basically. Took it, it went up went to the next level went to the next level and you know somehow it just died there you know so i and i feel like a lot of times we face this even here we face this because a lot of what we do here is self-funded you know so it's not easy to be nice to be able to get people to actually support yes it's nice to get people to support it'd be nice to get the government to support really because i feel like yeah i mean grants from like um companies trying to do their csr every now and then but like Imagine if, imagine a, a society where like the government is actively involved in the creative community. It's it's just going to be something else, you know. Like I imagine places like Amsterdam and Japan. I don't believe those communities. Korea. Those communities did not become that way, unless like just by grants and all of that. I think the government was really active about how can art be a part of our society. I well, would say. I hope those are up listen. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see this and you know change a few things because i think we have a lot of potentials mm -hmm. we have a lot of talents yes you know and there's so much that can bring in um you know uh profit and can increase nigeria's gdp you know yeah through tourism through art through lifestyle mm -hmm. we have so many talents yeah i just hope they get to see yeah this. i mean like i feel like in every aspect of me like the, what you're even doing right now is important because you're sharing the information mm -hmm. you know because sometimes that's also lacking people just don't know you know and it's not just like the artists even the, the, like from on top they're like okay are there really creatives in this yes there are you know but they may not know so perhaps we should also just try out our best collectively to just put out more information, you know, yeah. like a, what I say, a very creative, calm, but pushful way, <laughs> you know. So yeah. Mm -hmm. There's this thing. If you go abroad, take for example, you go somewhere like France, you can pick up souvenirs, you know, maybe something about Paris, the Eiffel Tower. You can pick up so many things. Yeah. If you're in Abuja here as a foreigner. There's almost nothing you can pick right, up. Right, it's you know. true. Mostly beads. <laughs> Mostly just beads, beads. But there's nothing that speaks about right. Abuja, no crafts that speaks about, you know, where they are. You take, for example, Abuja or Lagos, and you're picking and you're taking back mm -hmm. to your country to show, you know. See, you see, what you did is actually market research. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It's just about, like, what is something I can actually do? What What's the gap I can feel? Like, this is, like, I mean... Nigerian merch. And these things are, <laughs> yes. you know, very simple things that could be in a place like a bank, it could yeah. be in restaurants when, mm -hmm. you know, foreigners come to restaurants, they could. Because over there, that's how up. it is. You see mm -hmm. these little stands with all these little souvenirs, maybe yeah. like stickers for fridges, things like that. Yeah. So, um, I know St. Cobb um, accommodates a variety of creatives from tech, you know, to craftsmen to artists to musicians yeah how do you source for new artists hmm. 
So I wouldn't say there's just one way we source for artists. You know, like I said, Nigeria is a well of talent. You know, trust me, you can walk down to your road, you can go to Jabi Art Market and you see all of them there. You know, or maybe you walk down into Wuse and then you yeah. just have to have an eye for these things. You know, mm. I did do a course on like aesthetics and beauty, so I okay. do actually have an eye for these things. You know, however. Something we try to do on a quarterly basis is a call for artists, like okay. a creative call week. So we're actually having one this month in November, end of November. So we call it creative week and we call for all kinds of artists. Okay. You know, be it visual, fine, you know, maybe you don't even know what kind of artist you are yet, then this is the place you're going to come and find out. So we do that creative week. It usually runs, yes, for about seven days and each day okay. we theme each day to have something in particular maybe it's a day of film or a day of music okay. you know there there was one we had i think two years ago which was the five senses exhibition i don't know if that was the exhibition you came to no. was it? it wasn't okay mm -hmm. but we had one called five senses exhibition so we kind of had artists come here and display artworks based on the five senses we have maybe something that had to do with either smell taste sound sight you know, Exactly. So really, that's just it. We try to do this call for artists and you'd be surprised the amount of talent that works in. Does it ever happen that maybe maybe on social media you come across a talent and you just call him up like, hey, you? Yes, yes, yes. A lot. In fact, sometimes people would even reach out to us. They would okay. send like maybe pictures or videos of what they what they have done or what they're doing. And we'll be like, OK, yeah, come in. Let's see. Let's mm -hmm. see what we can do, you know, or let's see how we can where we can come in. You know, a lot of times, a lot of them want to actually find a way to turn mm. it into a business, okay. you know, and that's where we can now come in and help you structure all of that, you know, or sometimes they just need a platform okay. where they can be seen, you know, because a lot of talent we find. I, I remember there was, there was a, ta a uh, talented artist I know that he does kind of renaissance type artwork and then I checked his social media. He had like maybe 80 followers hmm. and he's so detailed. Like I was so mind blown by some of the things he did. He actually did the outdoor area, like yeah, our okay. outdoor area, you know, eventually. But I'm just saying how there's talent out there, but people don't even know. People don't know. Most of know? them don't even know how to reach, Yes. you know, mm -hmm. the larger population mm -hmm. of people. And we're, we're trying to be more intentional about our creative mm. weeks, you know, so try to theme it so that it's not a bunch of different artworks here. Um, would you say over the years, art has been downplayed I would say in Nigeria? You know, a lot of people don't even know that they're creatives. Some people don't even know that they have talents for them to finesse, you know, and do something good about it. Would you say art has been downplayed? I would say yes, definitely. I think it has been, especially with the generation that came before ours. I can't speak for the ones before, mm -hmm. but I would say the generation that came before ours because there was also always that stigma of the strong, the struggling artists, you know? So you'd see a lot of people, even me, there was a time I wanted to be like a full-time artist. I brought the conversation up to my parents. They gave yeah. me like side eye, like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> We don't see this happening. So I would say that, yes, it's been downplayed over time. But I do feel like there's a paradigm shift happening right now because I feel there are more people that really want to, when I say, do things and do things in a creative way. Even companies, you know, they don't yeah. just look for every the normal white collar person that knows how to do some administrative work. It's like, how do you think, you know? I have gone for interviews. Sometimes I go for interviews out of curiosity, okay. just to see the kind of questions that they would they ask, ask me, you. you know. And I would say, yes, collectively, I feel like there's, there's definitely a shift happening now. And like, this is a time where we, like Sync Hub, even your platform, this is a time where, this is the best time for us to be active, you know, because the time is now, basically, you know. I think more people are beginning to see that there can be a business with art. There is a space for creatives in our collective community. And yeah, people just want to get more involved and be part of it. I would yeah. agree so too. Because there's this um, consciousness now, you know. On my Instagram, 
-hmm. my timeline, just see artist, 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 artist. You know, I think I have ninety percent artist. And were they there like a few years ago? A few years ago, no. no exactly. We just see that just... people are evolving. You know, someone whose art was very poor some years ago. Yeah. You know, a lot of shows well. too. A lot, a lot mm -hmm. of shows. You know, a lot of talents. Well, what would you say is a proper framework for creativity? Like a set of you know ideas to ignite you know passion and. Hmm. How to stay passion and passion? I would say that mm. creatives just need to like get out there and get inspired by different things. Like anything can inspire art. Even what you just said earlier about um, the souvenirs, it can inspire a whole movement if someone is intentional about it. Yeah. So I think just trying to think of how how to make something better just trying to be inspired generally like for example sorry i digress but there, for example i was thinking the other day how growing up i didn't watch a lot of like in fact i don't think i watched any nigerian cartoons you know or cartoons that had nigerian setting and all of that yeah. i remember there was one african cartoon kiriku or yeah. something like that there are very few of them there are very few you know and I feel like that is a gap, a big gap that can be bridged because our stories are so unique to us, you know. So imagine like maybe our the next generation coming after us, like being able to at least identify, you know, in an entertaining way, just watching all these cartoons. So I think just getting out there and being inspired. I don't think there are enough ideas. I don't think there are enough things that can. I know there are times that things can feel very lethargic in our system, especially when it feels like you're trying to move forward, but the system is pulling you back, yeah. you know? But yeah, just try to keep going out there, finding things to get you and keep the flame alive. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I know if there's like a precise framework to do that, but I know that definitely Going, experiencing new things always gets mm. me fired up again. Like um, what you said just now got me nostalgic. I remember growing up and I used to watch Tales by Moonlight. Okay. Once it's night, you know. Did you watch it? Yes, I did. You know, my mom would call us come and watch, and we we'll gather, <laughs> and it's, it was um, something conscientizing, you know. Yeah. It kept morale in us, things you see, but I don't think kids of today is get to watch things like mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. know there are no stories like that anymore i yeah. think with a proper framework that can still happen yeah you know we can so. harness our own stories and tell them in different ways mm -hmm. creativity is telling stories that's it yes creativity is all about telling yeah, stories telling so it's stories. like how can we tell our stories Right. Thank you so much, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is where we're going to call it a day on this episode of Creative Lounge. I really enjoyed, you know, having this conversation with you. Thank you. You're very intelligent. And thanks for your two cents. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this is where we call it a day on Creative Lounge. Join us same time, same station next week. I remain Ahmed Mohamed Bello. Bye for now.